Hello everyone, my name is Navdeep. I am back again with a very interesting case study for all of you, which is for sixth nerve palsy or abducens nerve palsy. As you are aware, we have some cranial nerves in the brain and today we are going to talk about sixth nerve palsy in this case. Hope you find it interesting. To give you a bit of background of this person, this is a 35 years old male patient who is non-alcoholic, who has been a non-smoker forever, works in a warehouse and works full time, married and has a three years old child. Medical history of this person, he is a known epileptic since 2010. But unfortunately, because of inappropriate medical management in the beginning few years, there was a traditional medicinal options tried for this patient and eventually was seen by a neurologist in 2014. So between 2010 to 2014, this person has been trying some conventional medications or traditional medications which didn't help manage his epileptic symptoms. So in 2014, when this person has seen a neurologist, um, this person was having a fit at workplace quite often and was taken to a neurologist by the workplace supervisor. For so many years, different combinations of anti-epileptics were tried, but there were repeated remissions of seizure episodes every now and then. And the final stable combination that's working on this client since 2017 is carbamazepine, brand name Tegretol, sodium valproate, brand name Apilim, Iramate, brand name Topamax. Further on to medical history, this person often has seasonal allergies, gets frequent bouts of asthma, allergic rhinitis, most commonly the symptoms are watery and itchy eyes. Hyperlipidemia, recently diagnosed with total cholesterol levels of 6 millimoles. And this person was advised some dietary and lifestyle, lifestyle modifications. Coming on to family medical history. Mother has diabetes type 2 but is not on insulin. High blood pressure, hypertension, takes some... Um, but often skips it, not on regular basis. Peripheral neuropathy recently diagnosed from past six months. Father has had a liver cirrhosis which has been treated but however has a fatty liver for lifetime. One of the distant cousins has epilepsy as well and there is a family history of suicide as well. One of the uncles did committed suicide. So the presenting symptoms. Um, just give me one sec, please. Yeah. So here, look at the eyeball on the right side and on the left side. Would you see some difference? The right eyeball is deviated towards the nose, whereas the left eye is in correct position. The left eyeball is in correct position. So when your face is straight, looking straight means you are focusing uh, primarily, it's your primary gaze. So this person has isotropia. As you can see, the eye is deviated inwards. Eye, eyeball is deviated medially. And the person is unable to move this eyeball laterally towards the ear. So coming on to further symptoms, this person is presenting with double vision, diplopia from last one week. And this double vision is horizontal vision, means this person is seeing two images horizontally, side by side, not above and below, not up and down. It's side-by-side -side double vision. The right eye is very painful. 
there is esotropy of the right eye which means eye is deviated towards the nose as you can see in this image person is having watery and itchy right eye because this person is trying to make effort to move the right eye towards the ear but is unable to do so and in that effort the eyeball is getting exhausted painful watery and itchy this diplopia is resolved when the person is patching either eye if the person is patching left eye you can see one image if the person is patching right eye he's still seeing one image but when he's looking at the objects with both eyes then there are two objects seen horizontally side to side which means there is diplopia with both eyes only distant double vision is there it, it's resolved when focusing on the near objects for example if seeing something really close to the eyes there is no double vision but as the person tries to see something far from the nose, there is double vision. Interesting symptoms. There is no remission of epilepsy since 2017. So what are the treatment events in this study? Initially seen by a GP at a local clinic, after two days of unresolved diplopia and was prescribed fluoroquinolone eye drops but there was no effect general ex eye examination was done by optometrist internal eye examination was also done and there was no abnormalities identified there was no cause identified for diplopia this person was referred to ophthalmologist for further evaluation then awaiting for another three to four days this person got really restless and anxious of why this diplopia is not going away and went to emergency departments of one of the local hospitals in that local hospital this person was admitted under short stay unit all the blood works were done Various um, consultations were done, several neurological vital signs, neuro neurological examinations were done. Then there was a brain scan, CT scan, which was done contrast CT to um, identify vascular causes of this problem. Everything was done and everything came back normal. But this person was still not discharged and was kept under observation in the hospital for 48 hours. And there was no neurological deficit in those 48 hours. As everything was normal, there was no cause identified in the investigations. Still, there was unresolved double vision. Eventually, was discharged with a referral to the regular neurologist. And the regular neurologist gave uh, an urgent uh, priority appointment to this person within two days of hospital discharge. Neurologist review was conducted and it was found and diagnosed as a sixth cranial nerve palsy, which is the abducens nerve palsy. It's a weakness of cranial nerve that supplies the lateral rectus muscle of the eye. As you can see, it's the lateral muscles, hence why the person's eye was unable to turn out laterally. The cause in this case was idiopathic but was suspected that elevated cholesterol levels had to do something with it. The treatment plan for this person was no treatment, just reassurance that it will resolve in six to eight weeks as there was no brain pathology involved. Advised, advice was given to use glasses, but alternate patching of the eye was recommended. Like if the person is awake for 12 hours, this person will patch one eye for six hours and then alternate patching on the other eye for other six hours so that both eyes are working equally. Because if you remember in the symptoms, diplopia was resolved with patching of the eye. So same thing was tried again. And there was no medication changes to any of his existing anti-epileptic. 
guess what's, what the outcome was? Double vision was resolved in about two and a half weeks spontaneously without any treatment. So basically in this picture you can see this is the eyeball and this is the lateral rectus muscle. This is medial rectus means here this, this side is our nose. Our eye moves medially towards the nose because of this medial rectus muscle and our eye moves laterally outwards toward the ear because of the lateral rectus muscle. And sixth nerve, abdicin's nerve, innervates this muscle of the eye. The sixth nerve falci is weakness of the cranial nerve that innervates lateral rectus muscle, this lateral rectus muscle of the eyeball, also called abducens nerve, and it has somatic motor function, and the motor function is to move the eyeball laterally. This nerve arises from abducens nucleus in the pons in the brainstem, Lateral, lateral rectus muscle pulls the eye away from nose and when it gets weaker, the eye turns inwards towards the nose, making isotropia. According to one of the papers in National Library of Medicine, um, Charles Barrett and Michael are the authors of this paper. It says that sixth nerve palsy is most common isolated palsy in adults. And it's the second most common cranial nerve palsy in children. It's very important to consider the person's age while evaluating and diagnosing this condition because in adults, most of the causes are vasculopathic or non-vasculopathic. Vasculopathic causes may be like vascular, related to the blood circulation, related to the blood vessels in the brain. They can be diabetes, they can be um, elevated cholesterol levels, infarcts, thrombosis in the arteries of the brain, aneurysms, and non-vasculopathic, for example, trauma, subdural hematomas, inflammation like meningitis, and neoplasms, of course. In children, usually the causes are increased intracranial pressure, vascular anomalies, and neoplasms. And the treatment option is usually the cases resolve uh, spontaneously. Most of them resolve spontaneously within three to four months. And in those three to four months, because the person is having double vision, to avoid any injury or risk of falls or to avoid amblyopic um, eye, there is patching, um, alternate patching of the eye. In this case, alternate patching helped this patient. If it's not resolved, then prism therapy, surgical interventions, and treating the underlying cause becomes the other priority. These are the references, and if this condition remains unresolved for three to four months, then the neurologist workup, the further detailed neurological workup is essential. Thank you so much for watching this case study. Hope you liked it. It was a fairly simple and uncomplicated case study. If you would like to uh, have some more interesting case studies or any particular topics you would like, please drop in a comment below. Thank you so much.